All right, so a couple things I like to do when I uh, am opening up a diff to weld it is lay out a couple pieces of cardboard because you're able to write Sharpie on them with the parts. So if I pull off this part, for example, this is my brake disc and my brake disc locker ring. So I can keep that in order and know where it is. And then when I pull out all my little tiny, it's on the underside, but this has a bunch of case bolts in it, similar to these little ones. I'm gonna pull all those out. I'll put them on the cardboard. I'll be able to label it. The thing I like to do is bolt my tire into a rim because as you can see, it stands up by itself. You might have some issues pounding off your old hubs. Just keep whacking it. That's all I can tell you. It takes some time, but it will come off eventually. All right, so we're gonna get into opening up this diff for you guys. Let's start by uh, taking off all the bolts around it and take off this top piece and we'll get right into uh, what lies under there. Okay. Boom. Pull your screwdriver out. There you go. As you can see, it's just a axle shaft, spider gear on the end. And then if you actually look inside here, so this is like your ring gear as it spins, moves your spider gears, and then the axle, other axle shafts also connected on. So I'm gonna clean this up, and then I'll show you guys where you need to weld, and then we'll put it back together and okay, on our way. Okay, once you have pulled off the uh, top axle shaft there and removing the spider gear set, which is just a uh, dowel with uh, some spider gears, square cut on the back, they just slide into uh, these two grooves right here. But uh, for welding it, so as you can see, this spider gear is connected to the axle and it moves separately from the ring gear here. So I'm actually gonna weld a couple beads on the inside of these, either side of here, to the ring gear and that will make this one solid piece. All right, here we have one side of our axle shaft assembly with the spider gear and the hub. So this would have a axle shaft coming through it with a lock ring on there, lock it all in. But uh, we gotta take it out to uh, clean everything because we're gonna weld this gear to the inside here. I'll show you guys Okay, that. so assembled, it looks like this with the washer and the lock ring. I'm gonna tack weld either side and then run some beads to make this all one piece so it spins as a whole. And then by doing that, that will create one side locked and then I'll do this to the other side to lock it as well. This wall makes sense once it all comes together here, but I'm showing you guys each step. Now don't forget, preheat. Preheat, everybody. Okay, there it is. Weld it around. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll just go inside of all of these with a little tiny bead, all the teeth. But uh, that's gonna hold, that will not break. Remember to weld the back sides. Like so, and of course, the insides. Now those are super strong, don't gotta worry about them at all. Let's get on to the carrier itself. Okay, so we're inside the axle here. We're gonna remove a couple gears, get access to our shifter fork assembly. We're gonna We'll pull those out so that we can get to our detent balls and springs because the springs on this one are gone. Okay, so like Nick was saying, with the uh, detent spring being broken and not working, I'll show you here. This is a good one. You can hear that detent. You can feel it into each gear. And this is a broken one. No good. Okay, so we'll explain here how to fix it. First, you're gonna to wanna to pull this shaft out. You're gonna see that you have a little detent ball in there. And behind here is a spring. So I'm gonna pull that out and show you guys what it looks like. There's the ball, don't lose that. And if you do, yep. Yeah. 
And here's our broken spring. Two pieces broken. So we're gonna clean that out and uh, replace the spring, put the ball back in and put it back onto our fork, onto our shaft. This is the fork, people. Here's a replacement spring, just bought at the store. You're gonna to wanna to slide that. Oh, oh, missed. <laughs> okay, you're gonna to wanna to slide that down into your hole. Okay. All right, so once you guys get the spring in there, you gotta to, gotta to fidget with it to get the ball pushed in, just like so. And now, she actually stops in her gears again. Yeah, you guys can see down here, this spring did break into three pieces. So we got a bag of springs. We found one that fit, cut her down a little bit, and now he's got perfect okay. detent. So we ended up doubling the springs, and now that's a nice, firm shift. Oops, don't wanna to go too far, in between each gear. So you can see these little notches, the detent balls on the other side, back here, and it locks into each one of these. So this carries a gear, and when it gets pushed or pulled into a gear, this gear now selects the new gear, and you go from first, to second, third, you get it. Anyways, we got that fixed. If your guys' shifter's super sloppy, it's all dangly wangly, this is what's wrong, and this is the fix. Super simple, but you have to take apart your transaxle. So if you're already in there to weld it, might as well have a look. Get her done, peeps. Okay, so with our forks <clears throat> back on our sliders, we can reinstall those. And then next, we can slide our gears back in there, making sure the gear sits on the shaft centered. Next shift your fork in there, and the next gear in place. The right way. All right, guys. So I'm sorry I wasn't able to get a video of this part, but you are able to flip one gear in your transaxle. So you can see this gear I'm holding has a chewed end. The top side there, it's been uh, chewed up pretty good, like so in this picture. And uh, in the next picture, you'll see that you're able to flip the gear 180 degrees on this dowel that it sits on. So take it off, flip it 180 degrees, and slide it back on. And look what you got. You got fresh teeth again. So once you've done this, you are, uh, you're able to install everything and not worry about it. So it's a good uh, mod I suggest you do if you have a peerless transex like this. Okay. So we're gonna put our axle shaft and welded spider gear, or what's left of them, assembly, into our housing. So, drop her in. Hopefully. You gotta work her past your bearing there, it's gonna be a tight fit. Hammer. Seat it into the case. You'll feel it drop in. Yeah, you'll know when it's when it's on. Okay, so again, if you have these little needle bearings in the end, you want to make sure that goes on the shaft between the carrier housing and the stop on the shaft that's essentially <clears throat> a thrust bearing so when you have when you're drifting in the snow all the side forces go into the bearing instead of the housing or whatever else it's going to transfer into seals outer real bearings 
places where you don't want the forces going. So after that's on there, you're going to put your C-clip on there. We're doubling up because ours aren't as thick as the factory ones. You can probably see the difference. So we're going to stick two on there. Okay, so we went ahead and threw one of our hubs on and bolted it to a rim so we can stand this up because the next part kind of gets hard once we install the axle shaft and finish this welded assembly or lock differential. Uh, we'll install the case and that kind of gets tricky to do on the bench. So we suggest putting your hub on and putting it on a rim and that will help you out. Okay, we'll start installing this stuff. And we'll... Okay, so we're going to reassemble our differential here. Don't forget to uh, throw your good luck charm in there. We're going to throw a little rope in there. Just in case you ever need some rope on the trail, split the case, get your rope. <laughs> Make sure you tighten these down, nice and even. Star formation, just like you do your lug nut. Pattern that gets her done. Get them snug, and then a little tighter. That right there is how you lock the differential. It's hard to show you because it's on the rim. But that right now is I locked. Mean, if it wasn't locked, yeah, I'd be, be able, able to spin it. one shaft. I mean, I can spin it a little in the hub down below, but... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, we're going to finish reinstalling. So, just like the way you put it in, or took it out, I mean, same way you put it in. But don't, don't drop washers. That makes your life a little, a little less challenge. Again, everything sits one way. You can't change up things other than the things that we told you you can change. Okay, line up all your shit. Now one other thing, people, I want you to look at. It's gonna be hard to see. But down this shaft hole, there is a fl flat washer at the bottom. You need to line that up, because if that is not lined up, you are gonna have a lot of issues. Make sure you shove a screwdriver down there, line it up. Don't forget, line it up. Line it up. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, other half of the case. Obviously the two shafts are gonna go into the corresponding uh, holes. But one more thing you're gonna wanna check out is make sure your washers, like that guy, and then there's one under this guy, are all good. You don't want any fucked washers, like I said. So we checked ours, we're all good. So now we're gonna reinstall the case. Okay, so people. Once you've kind of got everything somewhat lined up, it's now fine tuning, moving sl things slightly. Get this back into neutral. Yeah, the main thing is you're gonna to wanna to put it into neutral, so you're gonna to have to dick with that with a flat blade. Yeah. Woo! All right. Okay, people. It takes some freaking work. I tell you what. You got to get in here. here. I'll show you. You got to want it. You got to want it is the big one. You got to work in here. You got to fiddle these two shifter forks, the two dowels. 
are hard to line up inside the case. So you guys fiddle in there while your buddy pounds the case. And you just gotta keep doing that. And eventually people, it will seat. You gotta work at it and you gotta want it like Nick said. Once you do that, you'll have this. So get them going people, that's a lock diff. Stay with All right people, so that's it. Tighten up the last bolts on the transaxle. We're gonna bolt the shifter on later, but uh, we went through the gears, everything works, and it's uh, locked. So uh, I think uh, Nick here is pretty happy, and I think, uh, I don't think Scrappy knows yet. I think Scrappy's gonna be pretty fucking happy too. Oh, she's getting a good gift. Yeah. There it is. The hubs he'll be using. Weld, weld together five bolts. We did put the shifter linkage on. Everything works. Rock on.